SEIU 10 to 1 the retirement uh, chapter of SEIU. Um, I do not think banks are too big to fail, but it seems like these folks who are so much in service of the community are too big to change. And I think that's what the issue is. You all came in very defensive. And this is really about a change of rules, which actually would make you better citizens and better members of the community. I see nothing threatening in these rules. Um, it, I don't see anybody getting fired. Your, your, money, is, your, your money is not being re reduced. You can still uh, contribute and get tax write-offs to all these nonprofits, which, by the way, their staff makes very little money. I mean, these are the people that are the lower paid people. The city employees, I'm one of the city employees, I'm a retiree, and I have to say, I'm, I'm here as a member. And I really, again, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I want to see the policy, the social investment policies upheld. It's not just about financial health. And this, this, I am very proud of our retirement system. In spite of all the, the things that are happening uh, on, in the market, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the country, we've managed to keep up there like second in the nation or at some point, you know, when everything else was crashing. But I've always felt that part of that was the honesty of, of the people that are trustees. And I, and, but there's room for huge improvement in investments and socially responsible uh, investments. And Wells Fargo, I wish you'd just take a look at these, uh, the motion. I support Herb's, Herb's motion as a member. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Oh, thank you. Linda Ray. Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, better late than never. Um, I, uh, I'm a member of the retiree system. My name is Linda Ray. And um, I'm calling upon the board to support the level one and two of your own uh, responsible social investing protocol. And I'm a little confused on someone who has a stock in a bank. Uh, still sitting here. I just thought the person should recuse themselves. Um, I am um, also a nurse, and I have seen the harm done by these policies. I've seen the stress and illness that have come with people. Um, if you don't see that, you can kind of just go like this, and it's not happening, it's not happening. But I think uh, it's also known as death by foreclosure. And I think this board really could end this by voting for your own policies for the level one and two. And I urge you to do so. And I'm really sorry the way this set up here today when I came in. And I thought, hmm, um, I guess people really don't want to hear from the people most affected. And I'm a member of this retirement system. And I hold you all, I'm watching. I can't read the last part. I don't want to say stardust. Is it stardust? Yeah. Stardust is a famous song. So I just wanted to make sure I was saying it correctly. Is he gone? Star first? He's gone. You want to talk to him? Uh, Ms. Linda Sanders. Sanders. Oh, oh, she was from Calvary Hill. She already spoke in lieu of the minister, or the pastor. Bob Mars Marson. Kathy Lips Lipscomb. Lipscomb. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you for. Uh, getting us on the calendar. That was a big victory for us and for the community. Um, my name is Kathy Lipscomb, and I work in the senior movement. I work with ACE, and I'm a delegate to the Labor Council. Um, I must say, first of all, that 
the nonprofit people who are here today who receive money from Wells Fargo, good for them. But what they don't know is that Wells Fargo has refused to seriously, Mr. Bustos, seriously talk with us for months and months and months. We have 30 people who are in the foreclosure pipeline with Wells Fargo. And we don't just want to talk. We really, at this point, need fair, affordable loan modifications. So please don't jerk us around. I'm, I'm really impressed with, with what you said and what you're trying to do in the community. And I just ask you to talk to us with an open heart and seriously. These are 30 human beings who've suffered a lot not knowing where they're going to be living in a year. It's a horrible thing. So I have two letters to submit from the Unitarian Universalist here in San Francisco. You know, their legacy is with Star King, who was a fighter to preserve, uh, to keep California in the Union in the pre-Civil War days. So they feel very strongly about social justice. They have, they open their church every night to homeless people. They have, must have uh, 60 to 100 people sleeping on cots there every night. They very, feel very strongly about the two uh, proposals that were put before you today. And also the senior movement, the Grey Panthers, the Grey Panthers know that people get evicted, older people, why? or get foreclosed on. Why? Because they try to help their children. They take out a loan. They are very vulnerable. They get predatory loans, too many of them. They get ill. They take out a loan. So, and they try to fix their homes. So please, thank you, Mr. Myberger. Your words meant a lot to us. And I hope the others of you will take his words to heart. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Very good. Ross Rhodes. Uh, next is Susan McDonough, but you've already spoken on this item. Now, the three people who were in the hallway, had you had a chance to sign up? Have you had a chance to sign up, sir? You, could sit well, here. Okay. you would like to speak? Okay. Last two speakers. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. You came in as a plate as well. Okay. That's it. Three more speakers, and the item will close. Yes, I'm David Williams. I'm the president of the West Bay Retirees Chapter of SEIU 1021 a member of POB and a trustee of the Labor Council and other organizations. There's a labor adage, it goes back to the ILWU, it may actually go back to the Wobblies, the IWW, that an injury to one is an injury to all. So I'm very upset that Wells Fargo, and I commend all that you had to say about all the wonderful things you're doing, but there's complete, you're completely denying the injuries to one and all that have gone on through some of the foreclosures that have been happening. And I think you need to own up to that and take responsibility for it. I also think that the board needs to do the same thing. I think this board has a social responsibility as well as the fiduciary responsibility to not duck it, not say go to your legislators. You have the power. Other boards have already taken those actions on level one or two. You could do it too. This is a travesty to sit and take a good measure and not get a second on it, then have to take the countermeasure and get it seconded just so we can speak. That the whole thing is a, it's a farce. Thank you. Excuse me, the lady there in the green blouse. Hi, um, my name is Grace Martinez. I am on staff with the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. We have, um, you know, been here, our m many of our members have been here for the last four months, and, you know, we've taken a lot of active steps to, number one, really pressure banks to do the right thing case by case, and even a larger scale, and just to address some of the issues about whether this board has the ability to really do something about it, and even questioning legislation. It took three years to pass the Homeowner Bill of Rights, and the banks put fifty to seventy thousand dollars a day to defeat it and that doesn't legislate justice it le it legislates process just very simple process that you only talk to one person at a time that they give you either a foreclosure track or they give you a modification track not at the same time it also gives you the ability to finally sue for damages if the bank makes a mistake those are three very simple things that people should have had in 2008 but it took seven years for anything to be done 
So I think this board has an opportunity to make a statement and support their own retirees and p p uh, make the, put the all the banks to task, even the three that are in front of you. Thank you. And I think just a, no a couple of things that were brought up by Wells Fargo, we met with three of their executives last um, August. For the most part, it was really good. However, the, um, the talks broke down. And the way that was set up, and I know that someone just mentioned, it's like I want to talk to individual homeowners. We tried that. Actually, we met in a secure uh, a room where we had to show our ID, and people were selected from our group to be in that room. We couldn't bring homeowners. So I think that to, just to bring this to light, it isn't just about Wells Fargo, it's the entire industry. And I think 11,616 people in the foreclosure pipeline with Wells Fargo also is a reason why we should have this discussion. We want to meet with them, we want a serious conversation, and that's all we've wanted. Hello, uh, my name is Chris Wright. I'm the Executive Director of the Committee on Jobs, an association that advocates for economic growth and job creation in San Francisco. I'm here today to say that the resolution that's before you, the resolutions, are largely misplaced. The well-known mortgage companies that engage in subprime and aggressive lending practices that fed this mortgage bubble that everyone here is concerned about, that we all are concerned about, Countryride, Golden West, AmeriQuest, Washington Mutual, they don't exist. Banks like Wells, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, the ones that have been, uh, have been isolated in these resolutions, at the request of regulators, acquired, acquired these bad actors and have been working since to sort out the mess and to assist the distressed borrowers. The resolution appears to target Wells, Bank of America, and J.P. Morgan Chase, not for their own historical lending activities, but instead for the lending activities of entities that they took over before they, uh, before they were taken over. Excuse me. Mortgage servicers, including those targeted in this resolution by name, have worked hard to support distressed borrowers and prevent foreclosures whenever possible. In combination with government programs, community partners, and unprecedented outreach efforts, servicers have completed millions of modifications. Historically, financial institutions have been amongst the strongest corporate citizens here. These banks targeted by this resolution are leading employers in, our, in the community. Employers of a broad base of employees um, with a broad uh, education backgrounds. <coughs> they lend billions of dollars annually into this community and routinely rank amongst the most generous corporate philanthropic partners here in the city. I ask that you reject these resolutions. Ms. Thomas, would you? Well, thank you very much. I'm not on the list, but I don't just want to give make a couple of comments very briefly. My name is Jean Thomas. I'm a re retired city employee. Um, I'd like to, I was struck by the comment that, uh, by one of the commissioners, that perhaps this isn't a proper milieu to uh, resolve a political problem. And yet, it's the political problem that simply hasn't worked. It is not working. This is reported all the time in, or in uh, the, the public press, uh, the responsible public pr press, I might say, even conservative pro uh, public press, such as the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. So it's precisely because of that that we are in a frustrated situation and we must take action on this particular program. Be we must take action not only because it's the right thing to do, because it is because our members, our members have suffered and are suffering, and they are asking us to do, to live up to you, rather. I come so often. I really anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> your responsibility to do what is in the best interests of the beneficiaries of this uh, system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Baker's letters, and I wish you would have sent this to me earlier. Uh, this is a letter signed by Tim Paulson. 
This, this echoes the comments made by Clerk Sansky, Gene Thomas, and many other of the employees, uh, Kay Walker among them. Thank you for your comments. Uh, this is Tim Paulson, Executive Director for the San Francisco Labor Council. These are all the unions that got us here at this table, uh, to a large extent. I'm writing on behalf of the 100,000 members of the San Francisco Labor Council today to ex express our support for the two motions that we understand we consider at the April 10th meeting. And you know what that is. Another letter I want to read that Harry Baker provided. This is SCIU, uh, signed by Roxanne, S Roxanne Sanchez, the president of Local uh, 1021. I'm writing today to express uh, SCIU 1020 support for the two motions that we understand will be considered today. Very, very strong labor support behind this. We, we talked about a couple issues. I, uh, some substantive issues about, well, this is all Wells Fargo. Um, first off, Wells Fargo bought WAMU, they bought uh, Wachovia and these other banks. They bought them. They did. They have to assume responsibility for that. And that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying that it's the heads of the company, Mr. Uh, the head, the CEOs that are responsible for this. Uh, they made the decision. The other very important point was a single point of contact. And that is a big issue because I'm hearing one side or the other side but there's no single point of contact. We're talking about this being resolved through uh, legislation. Has it? No. Well, that, also I want to, re I want to um, read this letter uh, that uh, Gene Thomas, this article in the uh, Wall Street Journal, Flaws Cited in Foreclosure Review. A federal watchdog is faulting U.S. bank regulator regulators for a flawed review of foreclosure documents saying the agencies did not establish consistent procedures or adequately monitor the consulting firms performing the work. And then it goes on further, uh, the review has resulted in wide discrimination in how banks performed, with J.P. Morgan Chase reporting errors just 0.6%, while Wells Fargo, 11%. There's room for improvement here, and what I would like to do is, I'll talk about unfairly targeting local companies, I don't think that is. Let me address those issues. And let me uh, uh, amend my motion to amend that motion on the floor okay. that I seconded. It was incidentally to provide to all banks, not just Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, and um, Bank of America, but all of the banks that are mentioned in staff's memo. That is specifically Bank of America, Citibank, Everbank, HBSC. We're in trouble with some LIBOR problems also. J.P. Morgan Chase, MetLife, PNC, SunTrust, U.S. Bank, and Wells Fargo. So it should provide to all of those banks, which was staff's recommendation, because those were involved in the settlement of the Attorney General, or those that have been involved in the predatory lending. So I would like to offer the maker of the motion to apply that to all of the banks that are mentioned in staff's memo, not just to Wells Fargo, B of A, and um, Chase. I believe the motion on the floor was to not take action against any of the banks on either level one or level two, which was Commissioner Macris's motion. So it already includes against any bank, and it would be take no action at level one or level two against any of the banks. So it's, it's not relevant. Pretty much. Okay. In a nice way, though, of course. Um, well, in that it's covered. It's covered. It's covered. Right. Well, in that case, let me just say that I, I hope to convince you to vote against the motion that is in favor of these things. And also, in terms of, well, if, if the banks are saying that, oh, we're not discriminating, that we have policies in place, why would you oppose, why would you oppose something reaffirming that? I don't get that. If you are, you're guilt-free, so what's the problem here? I don't see why there's an opposition to it, if indeed you spoke um, with a, 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 uh, not disingenuously. So if that's the case, then what's the problem putting policies in place not to happen? And I like the proactive versus the historic issue. So I don't see why there'd be any opposition if you're saying we haven't done it and we have policies in place to ensure that it doesn't happen. I don't understand why there's any, any issues with it. So. Anyway, I would appeal, again, I would appeal to my colleagues to vote against the motion that is um, very succinctly to vote against uh, Commissioner Mackerel's motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
clarify what motion is on the table and what possibly you might be voting okay, on? Let's go back and just simply restate the motion. Then I will again reaffirm why I am going to vote the way I vote. The motion made by Commissioner Macris was to take no action at level one, level two, or level three. He didn't mention level three, but no action at level one or level two against any of the banks that were identified in the item. That's this list, not the one, two, three. It's the entire the higher 14. Okay, thank you. And that motion was seconded by Commissioner Macris. Right. He indicated for discussion purposes. Parliamentary doesn't matter at this point. Yes. So now the vote is on the table to, or excuse me, now the vote is on the table to. It's on the floor, on to, the floor. to either vote in favor of that motion. If you vote in favor of that motion, no action will be taken on this board item or vote against it. Uh, that would mean that you want to uh, consider another motion. In terms of our policy of how the ESG works, I did not find sufficient information or proof why we skipped step one to step two on several of these items. Part two, part of the policy is if we invoke any of these policies, we are not to impact our returns. This goes to the issue of, I won't say it's if we were going to divest, we should have done it sooner. I know divestment is not on the calendar. And divestment basically means do not buy. It doesn't force sales. That's a slightly different motion. But that a reason to hold on to any of these stocks, which I believe most of them we own through the index fund, is we would expect all of these banks to, one, follow the law that exists, that existed, and to agree to the agreement they've already made with the federal government and the various states. I forget how complicated that agreement is, but different state attorney generals got their own pieces in it, partly because banks are a regulated state by state, like insurance companies. So that's one reason why I'm saying it's okay what the banks did. The frustration, anger, life-changing effects and harm to people getting who have lost their homes or about to lose their homes while all this sorts out. I won't say that's beyond what this board can do by making a vote or even making a statement by a resolution or introducing in a proxy. But that's what level this whole ESG is about in terms of protecting the investment funds and trying to address social concerns. But the social concerns are secondary priority to the investments of the fund. So I'll tell you that's why I am going to vote for this motion. And uh, it's not wishful thinking that smart bank leaders deal with the communities honestly. As complicated as this process is, and I think last month I mentioned the federal government basically stopped the whole auditing process after investing $3 billion in it. They realized what they were trying to do to clear up this mess had failed. It is that complicated. All, this, all these words, in a sense, mean nothing to a person who's getting ready to lose their house tomorrow. It's very unfortunate, but in terms of what actions we're going to take and vote going through all our process, it's not that it's not going to help that person tomorrow, but going forward, what can happen that will help all members of the plan who is, to whom we have fiduciary responsibility. So I think the level one, level two motions do not help with that. That's why I'm going to vote for this motion. And I'll be happy to speak to the groups, to the union reps, to the memberships, and walk through this all again if you like. Call, call for the vote. Okay. I have comment. met with one of the groups already. Public comments. If there's no further comments, call the question. All those in favor of the motions that basically is to not proceed with level one and two against any of these banks listed. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion fails. Okay. Item two. Make the next. Oh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, what was the vote? 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Two, two. Two, two. Motion, motion failed. Do we have a roll call? Well, we could see who voted. Okay, I, I make the motion that we adopt uh, level one social policy. 
Say again? I, I, I make the motion that we adopt level one social policy, which applies to all the banks that are listed in staff's uh, uh, memo. Do we have some, do we need to have discussion before you make a motion or the discussion come No, you need a motion. Normally we'd just ask for a second before, or you want to make a motion, a second out of courtesy or whatever the phrase was. Or if there's no motion, the motion dies. Calling second, third. There's no second. There's no motion on the floor. I'm ready to move to item two on the calendar. Thank you. I will have a brief break before we move to item two. And actually, item two will be a closed session, time certain. And yeah. so, what we'll need is we'll need everyone to leave the room. We have That's what uh, I an interview for the, uh, for the position that the board. Now I'm on record.